Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and happy Halloween to everyone. If you're celebrating, dressing up, going trick-or-treating this weekend and today, please stay safe. If you're just staying inside and playing Pokemon, which a lot of you based on this community tab poll that I did a couple days ago plan to do, enjoy that as well. I hope you're playing a good generation. I hope you're playing a good Pokemon spinoff. Whatever you might be playing, I hope it's fun. But today we are going to focus on an upcoming game. Legends Arceus, and why I believe and why I'm going to propose a gameplay mechanic that could introduce Spiritomb into the game. Let's jump right into things. Now we know from Pokedex entries, the anime, general lore about this Pokemon, Spiritomb used to be 108 spirits that were trapped away by humanity and sentenced to essentially damnation uh, in the odd keystone. And when you eventually unlock Spiritomb in Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum, and then eventually you can find them in some other games, but we don't need to go into the lore implications of that in this video. You catch him and you can use him on your team. We also know through lore that there are multiple Spiritomb. Cynthia has a Spiritomb on her team. So it opens up a lot of interesting discussions of what Spiritomb is. Is Spiritomb the reaction or the, the, the product of when we as humanity in the Pokemon world try to seal away these spirits? Are there multiple instances of societies in the Pokemon world needing to quell angry spirits and using this same cultural practice to imprison these creatures and eventually through whatever processes that exist in this world, they become Pokemon. All of that is really interesting and it's a great discussion for lore and it's a great discussion for theories. But what I want to propose today in this video, this spooky Halloween-esque video, is how this could work as a gameplay mechanic in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now we've seen from all the videos and all the trailers and all the information on the website that this is an open environment, open air game. It's not necessarily an open world game because you're going to be seemingly restricted to certain pieces of the map, even though when you're in those specific parts of the map, you're going to clearly have free reign within them. So it's open air, it's not necessarily open world. We also know that Game Freak historically, which are the ones developing Legends, Ilka are the ones handling BDSP, we know that they love their collectathons. We know that they love their little go around the map collecting all of these different, whether it's stickers or items or collecting different Pokemon. They love doing this. They include it in almost every single game. There's always some kind of collecting feature. They did it a ton in Generation 7. You could collect stickers in one of the games. You could collect Zygarde cells. There was just a lot to do. So what if in Legends Arceus, you are collecting souls? You are going around to all of the different human settlements that exist in Hisui at the time. Whether it's Jubilife Village, if it's some of the people we see on the map up north, maybe it's some of what looks to be farmers to the east. All of these little civilizations have a problem. They have a ghost or a spirit or some sort of a natural essence that is in the world and it is harassing them, it is haunting them, it is making their lives more difficult. And once you come trying to fill up your Pokedex and trying to explore Hisui to your heart's content, you are almost given the task of capturing these spirits and bringing them back somewhere where they can no longer serve as a threat to this community of people. And eventually, as you go about the region collecting all of the various souls or spirits or whatever Game Freak wants to label them in this game, you and your people at Jubilife Village, your little tribe, are then going to seal away all these spirits, and that is going to create maybe the first spirit tomb. I think it would be really interesting. I think it would be a fun mechanic. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that a lot of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. Actually, if you look at this thing, the vast majority of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe anytime, and we are gonna have a ton of awesome videos in the next month because tomorrow, is November. It is launch month for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It is the first month of a set of three months where we're getting two different releases, three different releases technically, if you split up Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So it is going to be an incredibly busy month for Pokemon content. And this is the best place to get your Pokemon content. So be sure to subscribe today if you're not subscribed already and you will never miss another upload. And when you're subscribed, be sure to hit that notification bell because you won't miss anything, even if YouTube doesn't push it to your subscription box, which they are known to do. 
let's go back to talking about Spirit Tomb. Being able to go around the Hisui region and capture all of these souls that are harming the people who are trying to explore this new wilderness of land that we call Hisui and what eventually we called Sinnoh would allow Game Freak to bring back their favorite feature, which is collectathons, and give you some sort of lore purpose as to the future. You are the person who helps trap Spiritum in the odd keystone near what will eventually become Salacion Town. That's you and that's your galactic team. I think it's really interesting and I think it's a really fun way for them to do it in a subtle way. There could even be some kind of cutscene or some kind of moment where you have to battle this combined spirit into the keystone. Maybe as you're trying to seal it, it slightly resembles what Spiritum is. They could even give it its own Hisuian form, Hisuian Spiritum. It would look demented. It would look like it hasn't fully developed. It could be really fun and really interesting lore for Legends Arceus to explore. Now, there is one thing that needs to be said when we're discussing Spiritum, and it's that while they haven't put a soft, they haven't put a hard timeline on where Legends Arceus takes place, they have put a decently hard date on where the Pokedex at least believes Spiritum was sealed. In one of its entries, as I mentioned actually in my previous BDSP team video, it was sealed around 500 years ago. And a lot of the fan theories and speculation as to where Legends Arceus takes place on the timeline of history in the Pokemon world generally places it around 200 to 300 years. But the good thing for us and the good thing for this little idea that I've had is that that's a very soft estimate. This is Pokemon. We've done a video a couple days ago about Game Freak having a literal iPhone ripoff in Legends. They don't really care to adhere to these dates as much, and anything they use from the real world that we try to attribute to game design choices and aesthetic choices in a game is strictly up for interpretation. They can deviate from reality as much as they want. This is a Pokemon game. This is a video game. It's fiction. So they can really do whatever they want. So I think 200, 500, it all lines up. And it creates some interesting stuff because I think it'd be really cool if you had like a soul bag as almost like a key item. This so this bag is enchanted with whatever magic the arc phone is also enchanted with. You could sell it as something like that. And that's how you're able to keep all of these spirits in the bag that you carry with you as you explore Hisui. It should be some ridiculous number, by the way. Maybe like 100 spirits, close to 108, which is what the original lore is. This should be a game-long process. I also don't think you should, in the end, get a Spiritomb. I understand that they want to make all the Sinnoh Pokemon available in Legends Arceus, as well as Hisuian forms of older Pokemon that didn't already have new forms in this region. But I think for the purpose of the lore, we should seal Spiritomb, and he should not be catchable. Maybe we have to battle him to seal him away, but I don't think you should be able to add Spiritomb to your team because I think that it it would be more powerful for the story arc of this game and for the story arc of the Pokemon world as a whole if we didn't. If we just sealed him away and left him. And it was us who did it with the help of Galactic Village, Galactic Team, whatever the heck our little group is called, going from town to town and eventually figuring out this is the way we can finally deal with these problems. Because this is the big theme seemingly of Legends Arceus. It's nature versus people. It's the natural world versus our ability to push further. It's a, it's a theme that we can really relate to in real life too. And I think it's very interesting to be talking about this in the context of Halloween or All Hallows Eve, where the spirits of the world come and are closest to the human world and are able to interact. It all kind of flows together really well, which is why I wanted to make a video during this time. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you like my gameplay mechanic idea for Spiritomb or do you have something else in mind? If you think Spiritomb is even going to be in the game, of course, it could always be the case that he's already been sealed, he's there, and we can unseal him and catch him in this game. That could be realistic too, but I would love if they turned it into a gameplay mechanic, but if you disagree, be sure to let me know down below. With that being said, I have been Linky. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and we'll see you all in the next one. Happy Halloween. Peace out.